Alright, today I'm going to make a short video about quadratic inequality and yeah, because recently just have one student actually come to me and then he, she says she, she couldn't find this video so I decided to make a short one and I realized this topic is quite important about the quadratic equation and quadratic function so seem this is important topic so I will make a short video for it with the few examples Okay, first, the first mistake about the quadratic equation is like Okay, for example if we have x minus 4, x plus 3, this is, which, this is a quadratic equation, equals to 0. Then a lot of, stu a lot of students definitely know how to solve this one. They will, say x, they will say x minus 4 equals to 0 and x plus 3 equals to 0. So they, so they will say x minus 4 equals to 0 or x plus 3 equals to 0. So therefore, they can easily get x equals to 4 or x equals to negative 3. But when the same type of questions go into the uh, quadratic, this is quadratic equation, which is what I'm doing. But the same type of question go into the quadratic inequality, then it will be totally different case. For, so for example, example, so if I say x minus 4, x plus 3, is bigger or equal to zero. So when I mark the exam paper, one of the most common mistakes is a lot of students will do like this because they're used to the way they do in the quadratic equation. So they will say x minus 4 is bigger or equal to zero or x plus 3 bigger or equal to zero. When you do like this, only one of your answer will be correct. But impossible, both also correct because the way you are doing uh, inequality for quadratic is wrong because you cannot do like this because for quadratic you have to actually um, remember or memorize something like this you have to understand this one when your quadratic equation which I call it QX is less less than 0 or less or equal to 0 there's no difference you will get the va value below the x axis this is x axis this is your quadratic curve so if your QX is bigger than zero, you will get the area which is outside the circle. So you will get this area. Let's say this is A and B. So in this case, if I solve this quadratic equation, if this one is less than zero, my x value should be between A and B. Let's say this is A and B. For this one, if my quadratic equation is bigger than zero, so my curve will continue go, uh, go beyond B and go less than A. So because my curve is actually going these two directions, isn't it? So my first thing is my x will less than A because x will go less than this value. And then th the second inequality is my x will bigger than B. Okay, this is, uh, this is what is the difference between like bigger or less than. So, what if, if I have the equal sign at the bottom? So, it's the same thing. If less or equal to zero, you just make sure you add the equal sign for both. If this is bigger than zero, you just make sure you will add equal sign for both also. But the idea for less than and bigger is the same. So, if come back to this case, if I have x minus 4, x plus 3 is bigger or equal to zero, so since this is bigger or equal to 0, then I will sketch this diagram. I will sketch out this diagram. I know this one will give me negative 3 and 4. Negative 3 and 4, which we already did just, just now. You will get something like this, isn't it? So I say it's bigger, than, it's bigger you will go this two direction. So that means my x should be, because if less than negative 3 will be negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, right? So x will less than or equal negative 3. Or x will go this direction, right? So it should be bigger or equals to four. Okay, this is how we solve this kind of question. So if I want, if I really want to change a bit, I make this symbol become less than. If x minus four, x plus three, is less or equals to zero, so then I will sketch the diagram. I just randomly sketch this one. Then I will get uh, four and negative three, doesn't it? Since this is less or equal, they will get something on the middle. That means my, no 
I know that my x value should be between negative 3 and 4. Okay, this is the difference between less than and bigger than. Okay, so okay, so I will give you a few examples to actually make sure you can understand this one better. Okay, so yeah, so let me choose one of the uh, question here. So if you have the inequality look like this, and you see the highest power is x squared, you know this is quadratic inequality. So this is qu quadratic inequality. Uh, something I will always make sure is the coefficient of x squared, I mean the number in front of the x squared here is always positive. In this case, it is negative 6. So I cannot, uh, I cannot let my x squared become negative. Actually, you can, but, but your, when you sketch the graph, actually, you have to opposite direction. The u will become n. But then, I will recommend students always like, leave this one become positive. So what I will do is, since I want to make my negative x squared become positive 6 squared, I want to get I want to make my negative 6 squared become positive 6 squared. I will move every single one to opposite side. So, okay, so I move this one, become 6x squared. Positive 7x become minus 7x. 5 become minus 5. Less, this is less than or less or equal to 0. Then what I will do next is I will factorize it. I hope I can factorize this one. Uh, Let's see, 5, I can only be 5 and 1. In order to get 7, let's try 3 and 2. Yeah, 3x, 2x. 10x, this is 10x, this is 3x. Yeah, correct. Negative, positive. Okay, so after I factorize already, maybe I will, I will rearrange. Means I prefer write my equation on my left hand side. Then this is less or equals to 0. So you see, if this is less, is facing this equation, so after I change the position, the less is still facing my this, this equation. Uh. So you cannot simply change this symbol. And I know when, when I, if this is equal, if this is equal to zero, this is something you shouldn't write in the working, but then I just show you. If this is equal to zero, your x basically will get negative half, and your x actually will get uh, five over three, isn't it? If this is equal to zero. Okay, later we're going to use this value. Okay, you just assume if this is equal to 0, this one will equal to 0, and this one will equal to 0, and then you solve it, you should be able to get x equal to negative half and x equal to 5 over 3. Okay, then because this is less or equal, so I will sketch the diagram. This is quadratic. So I was, after I sketch my diagram, this is my x axis definitely. I said less or equal, the value is below x axis. You just imagine this is y. Why less than 0? Less than 0 going downward. If, if going downward, if bigger than zero, you will go upward. When going upward, the curve basically they go these two directions. So when bigger than zero, the, the curve actually will go beyond beyond this value and less than this value. If below x axis, the curve is just uh, below x axis, right? So it's just these two value. So we after we got these two value, definitely a smaller value I will write over here. This is negative half. The bigger value I write over here, which is 5 over 3. Okay, then I say this is uh, less or equal, right? So my final answer will be less or equal, negative half and 5 over 3. That's all. So this is how I solve inequality. You cannot simply say this is less than 0 and this is less than 0. This, the idea of doing that is wrong. Okay, so just a uh, few more examples. Okay, so for this one, same thing. So first thing is, I, I will need to expand it first. I multiply 2 into it, and I multiply 3x into it. Alright, then I always make sure that the x squared is positive. So here is positive 3 already, it's very, very nice. So I'm going to move my left hand side to my right hand side. So make here become 0. So this one, uh, minus 2x become plus 2x, so it plus positive 5x. And here is negative 2. Then the next thing I do is I will factorize it, definitely. This is 3x, this is x, this is 2, this is 1, and then this is positive, this is negative. So after I factorize, I will rewrite it. Then this is x plus 2. The bigger is facing the equation, then it? The less than is facing the 0. So bigger is facing the equation, less than is facing the 0. Alright, this is bigger than 0. So if we bigger than 0, same thing, I will sketch, uh, 
this diagram. After I sketch out this diagram, one actually will give me negative two, this is smaller value, the other one will give me one over three. Okay, you should be able to see this one. Alright, then bigger means go this two direction. It's not something outside here. So going this direction means x will less than negative two. Going this direction means x will bigger than one over three. Okay, this is how we solve the uh, inequality. Alright, for quadratics. Okay, so okay, so we actually okay, the purpose of learning the inequality uh, the quadratic inequality is to solve this kind of question, which is b squared minus 4ac. You will learn about all this in the I think it's the quadratic function topic. Alright, so let's have a look on this one. The question say find the range values of h. So when whenever you see the word range in MF, most of the time, they want the answer in terms of H is bigger than something, bigger than something, or H is less than something. It's I, either one of it. Okay, this is the meaning of range. So if the question says find the range of value, there's, there's so seldom chance actually you will get H equal to something because that one is not the range. Alright, so whenever you see range, please link to inequality. Okay, so they ask you to find a range value of h if this equation have no real root. So first thing is, whenever you see no real root, something must straight away go into your mind is b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. Okay, this is something you must straight away get it. Then, of course, I will need to solve this equation to get out my a, b, and c. Alright, so I will multiply h into it. So I will multiply h, x into it. So we hx minus 3x minus x squared equals to 1. I multiply x into every single one. Then what I will do is I want to make sure my x squared is always positive. This is negative, which is I don't like. So I'm going to move everything to that, the other side. So 0 equals to x squared. And then these two, okay, never mind. I move this one with positive 3x minus hx plus 1. Okay, it's Quite nice, but then I still couldn't see my A, B, C. I know my A is 1, but B, I just trying to join them together. So I, I rewrite it, X plus, this one I factorize out the X. I take out the X here, take out the X here, left 3 minus H, X plus 1 equals to 0. Then I can easily see my A, my A equals to 1. This is my B, is equals to 3 minus H. This is my C. My C equals to 1. So after that, only I apply my A, B, C into this equation. Okay, so my B is 3 minus H squared minus 4 A C less than 0. So this is 9 minus 6 H plus H squared minus 4 less than 0. So I'm going to rearrange it. So minus 6 H 9 minus 4, which is 5. So it positive 5, which is less than 0. Then I will factorize it, definitely. So this is h, h, this is 5, this is 1, both is negative. Alright, so less than 0. Let me use this place, you know, save some paper. Okay, so I'm going to sketch out the diagram. So this is 1 and 5. 1 I'm going to write here, 5 I write here. Less than means something on between, doesn't it? So my h value should be between 1 and 5 because this is less than. Alright, this is how we solve the quadratic inequality. I hope this few examples actually will give you some idea on how to solve this kind of topic. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you have any more questions, please let me know in my YouTube comment or in my Facebook. Okay, anyways, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.